So when we think about being lost in the woods and trapping for survival, we think of trapping large animals, you know, boars and deer and all those other kinds of animals. But the realistic thing is, is you really should, really should be targeting small game, um, mice, rats, rabbits, squirrels, those sorts of animals. They're easier to catch. There's more of them and you're going to spend less energy creating the traps. Today I'm going to talk about a pretty simple and easy trap that does require a little bit of rope, but it's really effective and you can scale it down to catch something as small as a mouse or scale it up to catch something as large as a boar or even a deer, but that would be quite energy extensive. So let's take a look at it. So the way this is going to work, here's your scissor pieces and you see how the notches are very, very steep and when you match them together, it spreads out really wide. That's what you want. So what I've done is I've went ahead and tied my string here, and I'm using bank line for this. And um, I'm gonna slide this down just a little bit, actually. It's a little too high up. Match them up so that the notches are facing each other. I'm gonna keep them a little bit of distance apart. And what we're gonna do is just make a sort of figure eight pattern in here. You don't want it too tight, because remember, what you want is for these to match it's out. Once you get it where you want it, then you can bring your string back in. And what I like to do is just run in a couple wraps through the middle here, just to keep it from coming undone or sliding off. And all we really need to do at this point is just to do a little, what I call a double overhand or any kind of finishing knot. It doesn't matter too much. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around a couple times, tie it off real tight, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a loop. We're gonna make our loop. You can make your loop anyway, just make sure that's a fixed loop. I'm just gonna do a overhand loop here. Now one of the keys here, you wanna try and get that loop as or the knot of the loop as close to this stick as possible. So once you've done that, the basics of this is done. So now that you have your loop tied on, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and tie my spring line onto the sapling. We're gonna take our hoops here, try to work them so they're nice and flexible. You can heat these up by the fire and that'll help too. And we're gonna stick them in the ground really close to each other. Now your scissor is going to sit right here, just like that. Now the wider you can get this to sit, the better. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take two sticks, or three sticks, and lash together a cross beam. And set it just a little bit behind or in front of your trap here. And you're going to try and get that nice and deep in the ground. So that's in there pretty good. So now what we're gonna do, that loop we made, we're gonna run our spring through there. Now the way that we're gonna figure out where to put our toggle, we're gonna bring our stick down and we're gonna hold it with our other hand. You're gonna spread this out as much as it'll go. You're gonna give it a little bit of slack. What you're gonna do is you're gonna assume your toggle is gonna go right about in there. And you're gonna want just a little bit of extra slack for room for error. Pinch that and hold it. So now that you know where your toggle's supposed to go, you can attach it with just a clove hitch. This is really simple. You take a loop, you spin the twine to the left, then you do it again, and you take the second loop that you made and put it behind the first. Slide your toggle in, and there you go. At this point, what you would do is you'd create a funnel point to funnel them underneath the two hoops. And when you want to block off the back side, so that, that way there's no way for them to get the bait without going through the kill zone. So now at this point, what we're going to do is take our toggle. It's going to go underneath. And then we are going to take our bait stick. I'm going to wedge it between it and the ground. You can use a stone or a flattened stick to help you. 
or to help it from impaling into the ground. Now once this is set, this is an extremely sensitive trigger. And you want to make sure that your face is well away. At this point what we'll do stretch out our scissor here. And what you can do is you can add a few more forks or a few or a few more sticks and stuff to funnel them in, cover this area up a little bit more. But otherwise the trap is set. You can see how the bait stick is positioned under there. Now I do have the bait stick tied to one of the anchor sticks just to keep it from flying off and getting lost. So now how this works, that is a hair trigger. When your animal crumb crumbs in, funneled in from here, you gotta go into the scissor. They stick their heads in here. And when they do, and they mess with that bait stick, the scissor activates and it breaks their neck and holds them against the top of this hoop here. So with that said guys, this is a really simple, really easy trap to make. You can make the scissor sets and the string around campfires. You can make dozens of these in an evening. And then the following morning you can run out and you can set trap lines with these. You can scale them up and you can scale them down to target whatever size prey you're after. These are also known as the Mojave um, scissor traps. They are used very extensively out west by the natives and uh, they've actually found large amounts of these sets along with natives and uh, they were used very successfully actually to catch everything from rats to rabbits and um, I assume other things. So with that said guys, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If you haven't already, hit that bell dingling icon down below. You'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video. And I will see you guys next week.